What is the LSP and how are language servers being used in the world today? What opportunities do they provide? And how can we push beyond their boundaries to build even more advanced tooling? Come along and we'll find out together. First, let's briefly look at how the official docs describe things. Implementing support for features like autocomplete, go-to definition, or documentation on Hover for a programming language is a significant effort. Traditionally, this work must be repeated for each development tool, as each provides different APIs for implementing the same features. The idea behind a language server is to provide the language-specific smarts inside a server that can communicate with development tooling over a protocol that enables inter-process communication. The idea behind the language server protocol, LSP, is to standardize the protocol for how tools and servers communicate. So a single language server can be reused in multiple development tools, and tools can support languages with minimal effort. LSP is a win for both language providers and tooling vendors. Remember that phrase because we're going to come back to it later. A language server runs as a separate process and development tools communicate with the server using the language protocol over JSON RPC. Notice that the docs didn't mention text editors anywhere. While that's a common application of language servers, the real goal is to give you write once, run anywhere tooling. Let's look at an example interaction. Imagine a user places the cursor in the text editor over some function and presses the keyboard shortcut for go to definition. The text editor sends a request to the language server asking, where is some function defined? The language server responds, some function is defined in file XYZ on line 22. Then the text editor opens file XYZ and jumps to line 22. Since the logic to resolve a definition is implemented in the language server, it can be used in any editor or tool the user happens to be using. Let's talk about how the LSP is a win for both language providers and tooling vendors. First, we'll look at languages. There are tons of languages supported. Your favorite language is probably in here somewhere. These language servers offer support for autocomplete, syntax highlighting, go to definition, and so on. There's even support for niche languages like Papyrus, which is a scripting language for Fallout 4 and Skyrim. Languages are certainly the place where the language server protocol is used most, but what about tooling vendors? I generally think about tooling vendors in two separate categories, frameworks and SaaS tools. Frameworks are opinionated platforms for building software, so it makes sense that they would want to have a home in your editor tooling. While this category of language servers is small, it is growing. SaaS developer tools. This category is the smallest, but also the one that I feel has the most potential. If you're trying to get your tools into the hands of the most developers possible, in-editor tooling lets you meet developers where they are, rather than making them go use your web app. In my experience, you also get huge opportunities for code reuse. If you think about a language server as an interface to some functionality, then you start to see how a library of core functionality can be used across even more interfaces, a CLI, an SDK, even your web app. The best part is that when you add improvements to the core functionality, it benefits everything down the chain. You may worry that building your functionality on the language server protocol means that you're stuck with the lowest common denominator of things that every text editor supports or things that are explicitly covered by the LSP. Fortunately, this isn't the case. We can use progressive enhancement to introduce functionality not currently supported by the language server protocol. To do this, you'll need to write some minimal per tool glue code, but most of the code will live in the language server itself. During initialization, a tool will let the language server know what capabilities it supports. The language server responds with what capabilities it has. Later, when the tool asks what actions are available, the server can consider the capabilities of the tool and only provide those that it supports. In a language server that I built, I wanted to be able to prompt the user to enter some text input in a modal. This isn't supported by the language server protocol, but adding it to the client was not a problem. I simply implemented a method called get input, and then when initializing the client, told the server that we support this custom method. Then when the server is trying to decide what actions are available to the client, it looks to see if this method is supported, and if so, presents the action to the user. The code for NeoVim was similarly straightforward. You can build as much per editor specific UI and functionality as you want in the glue code but you should always push as much functionality as possible as far up the chain as is reasonable so that more tools benefit. 
language servers are incredibly powerful, and they're not just for languages. The LSP gives us an amazing baseline to build upon, and we can always add in whatever custom functionality we need to make it even better. In my next video, I'll be creating a language server from scratch to show you how easy it is to get going. Hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop, and if you liked this video, give it a like. Until next time!